new day brings new challenges, but AARP only sees possibilities. We're tackling the concerns of our communities and supporting the kind of change that can benefit all of us. Take on today with AARP. Learn how at aarp.org sd. A local Boy Scout is reaching out to help the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House. We'll explain how coming up. Plus, remembering a pizza delivery driver killed on the job. We take you to the vigil. And how a family is moving forward in the recovery process six months after a tornado destroyed their home. Good morning. This is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Day four of the Summit League Tournament tips off later this afternoon, and we've been bringing you full coverage of the games both on air and online. Now, Kelly Land Sports' Travis Fossing joins for a recap of Monday's semifinals. The Summit League semifinals are complete, and it's an all South Dakota women's championship game and all North Dakota men's championship game. The USD women clashed with Oral Roberts in the Summit League semifinals. After a slow start, the Coyotes step on the accelerator in the second as Chloe Lamb lobs to Hannah Shervin, who banks through two and the foul. She had 15 points, 15 10 Yotes. Later in the quarter, Liv Corngable caps a 14 0 run with a triple from the corner. She scored six, and it's 24 10 Coyotes. More from the top seeded Yotes as Kira Duffy dribbles end to end, absorbs a contact, and banks through two. Summit League Player of the Year had 10 points. Late in the first half, Lamb dumps to Shervin, who misses, but Taylor Frederick grabs a rebound, bucket, and the foul. The sixth woman of the year had a team high 16 points, 35 15 at halftime, and South Dakota advances to the Summit League Championship game 65 43. SDSU attempted to make a return trip to the finals against NDSU. Opening quarter, the Bison trail by one but run the floor. Ryan Cobbins dribbles a length of the floor and scores off the window. She had 12 points. It's 11-10. Later in the quarter, the Jackrabbits follow NDSU's lead as Tylee Irwin goes end-to-end -end for a lefty layup. SDSU leads 17-13. Minutes later, the run continues. Riley Cascio Jensen spots Lindsay Thunick, who splashes through three, capping a 12-2 run. Jacks by seven after one. After building a 19-point lead early in the third, SDSU went nearly seven minutes without a field goal until Irwin hits for three in the closing seconds. She had 18, and the Jackrabbits advance to the finals, where USD awaits 76. 56. It'll be the top seeded USD women taking on number two SDSU in the women's championship game today, beginning at 1 o'clock, while the top seeded NDSU men battle rival UND, the number six seed. That game scheduled for 8 o'clock. We'll have complete coverage on Kelloland News at 5, 6, and 10 and online at Kelloland.com. Reporting from the Summit League Championships at the Premier Center. Travis Fossing, Kelloland Sports. Thanks, Travis. With temperatures rising, that means spring showers could be on the way. Let's find out what we can expect with meteorologist Scott Munt. Yeah, we have that mixture between light rain and light snow. That's in the forecast for today. A lot of that falling in the form of light snow and flurries for this morning. Temperatures will still be cool or cold in parts of eastern and northeastern South Dakota today as our numbers will be stuck in the 30s. Expect 40s for just about everybody else. So we do have light snow showers and flurries for this morning. It will be warm tomorrow. Sunshine will come back, or at least more sunshine is expected than what we'll have today. And then we'll have to watch for that rain snow chance for this weekend as temperatures cool again to the 40s for afternoon highs. We'll have more details on the Kevin Lane Live Doppler forecast coming up. Thanks, Scott. Fire crews were kept busy overnight in Sioux Falls. Crews with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue responded to a structure fire in the 500 block of South Spring Avenue just before 2.30 this morning. When crews arrived on scene, they found people hanging from second-story windows. One person fell from a window and was taken to a hospital. The fire was found in the stairwell of the building and quickly put out. The cause of the fire is under investigation. A Boy Scout here in Kelloland is looking to earn his wings through a special community project. Ethan Gullickson has started a hygiene product drive for the folks at the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House. He says while the project will help him reach the rank of an Eagle Scout, he's soaring for something a little higher than that. It's also about like helping the people 
who uh, like need something done for them. There are several bins around Kelloland most recently. He has one set up at City Hall. The drive goes until March 20th. Well, at the end of last month, Casey Bonhorse was shot and killed while delivering a pizza. Last night, Casey's friends and family held a vigil to remember him. The vigil was in the neighborhood where the shooting happened, and here we talked with his friends about her hopes for the neighborhood. That can feel comfortable coming home and not having to worry if they're going to get shot or not. And they don't have to be scared for their life, you know, to walk out of their car to their door. 21-year-old Johannesy Bryant is accused of killing Bonhorst. He is in the Minnehaha County Jail on a half-million-dollar bond. It's been six months since three EF2 tornadoes destroyed parts of Sioux Falls. Even though the storms are over, the trauma from the events lingers on for several families, including Matt and Gina Dittmanson. A tornado destroyed their home in September. Matt was home during the storm, and Gina was out of town. Gina says she still can't drive down her old street where their home used to be. Though they're grateful to be alive, they say support from friends, family, and the community still helps them as they move on. We have indefinite time on this planet. You make the best you can with what you have, and things are going to happen. And how you react or respond to those things, I guess, you know, sets us apart. The Dibbonsons have since moved to a condo. They donated what was salvageable from their home to Habitat for Humanity. The season at Great Bear has wrapped up. Every year on the last day when the temps are warm, Great Bear holds what's called Snurt Fest, a combination of snow and dirt. Skiers and snowboarders competed in a variety of games, races, and pond skipping, and this season may have gone fast, but officials are thankful for the season they had. Yeah, the season really went fast, but uh, it was a fantastic season for us. Over 44,000 visits this year. You know, the, the weather was so nice in the last half of January and all of February. People just kept coming out and, you know, had a great time. I mean, it's always inevitable. Uh, everybody starts noticing around the end of the season. So now it's just time a, kind of a time to have fun, screw around, you know, get away with some stuff. Just have a party. That's what Snurfest is. If you'd like to watch more of Thrills in Spills, we've posted extended highlights of Snurtfest right here on Kelloland.com. Scott? And in weather for this morning, we do have flurries and light snow showers in north central and northeastern South Dakota. They'll try to move to the east. Accumulating snow will stay less than an inch. We'll go mostly cloudy with periods of sunshine. Slight chance for showers this evening. May notice that across north central South Dakota. But as the sun sets, that goes away. We'll have clearing skies tonight, sunshine for tomorrow. And temperatures will be warmer. Our numbers today will be in the 30s in eastern and northeastern South Dakota. 40s for just about everybody else. Go ahead and visit the seven-day forecast while you're here at Kelloland.com. Thanks, Scott. And thanks for joining us for Kelloland on the go. Be sure to join us on air for midday in Kelloland. Until then, you can get up to the minute developments right here on Kelloland.com. Now go have a great day.